guys, come on in, you pickers. Today we are doing Towns Van Zant, another one, brand new companion, an excellent song, all because of Darren Cook, who sponsored the song for y'all. Unbelievable. He bought me some time to make the video, and that's his contribution to all of you guys, because now here it is for free, no paywall, mikesmusicmethod.com, download the tab, brand new companion. If you don't know this town song, go listen. Super loose, freeform, bluesy tune. I'm only giving you the intro here, despite the length of this video. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's just the intro, because it's real bluesy and loose, and it's very hard to memorize because of that feel that it has, right? It's not just a simple Travis thing where you can uh, intuit your way through it. It's a lot of soloing and cool, freeform, bluesy, improvising, very much inspired by Lightning Hopkins. So different format. If you're a beginner guitar player, this is not an easy song. But if you're a moderate guitar player and you're eager and inspired, note for note breakdown, here we go. In this video especially, you're going to really need the timestamps because it's hard. So you're going to jump around. Maybe learn the first four measures, then use the timestamps to jump to the slow run-throughs at the end so that you can play along <clears throat> I'm talking too fast. So you can play along with the timestamps for those particular measures and then you maybe learn five, six, seven, and eight. Jump to the slow run through at the end of the song to play along with it. And eventually you'll get there. It's a super cool song. Let's dive right in and thank you, Darren, for sponsoring this song. And not only to Darren, but to all of my patrons out there. You guys are amazing. You, you're, you're giving plenty of people a musical education. This video now has over 8,000 subs, tons of watch time every month. It's unbelievable. So everyone who is chipping in, uh, feel good about yourselves. You're not only you know buying me a cup of joe, keeping my lights on, my disgusting blue light today, by the way. I'm trying new lighting. It looks pretty hideous, doesn't it? But you're going to have to deal with it today. <laughs> uh, but just know you're not only helping me out and in, in helping me make a living doing this stuff, but you're giving this content for free to everybody on the internet. So to all my sponsors. Huge thank you. No further ado, Towns Van Zandt, brand new companion. Pew, 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 pew. Before we start, quick little note. Think of this song as being in 6-8. That's how I tabbed it out. It's going to be easier to think of the quicker notes. It's kind of compound. You can think of it as being in 4-4, but don't do that. We're going to think of it in 6-8. So let's start. The beginning is very cool. Measure one. So we're hitting open on the sixth string. Then I'm actually using my thumb again. You don't have to. You could use your pointer finger here. But because it's pretty slow paced, I'm also using a thumb pick though. So the fingering's up to you. It's loose and free form. Uh, so I'm not going to be a real stickler with you about it. But we got open on the sixth string. Use your uh, ring finger in the left hand to slide from five to twelve. Then open on the first string. And pay attention to the rhythm. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Measure two just builds off that after we have that slide. Cool, really cool measure. So we let's just go from that slide up again. And we did the open. And the measure two is second string and then the first string, 10th fret. So 12 on the B string, 10 on the E, back to the B string, then B again, but here we're sliding down. And now I put that he slides to five, but he's not really stopping, he's sliding and just kind of letting it die around the fifth fret. So there's no real ending note. And then softly after that slide, he's hitting the E string again, but it, it's not very loud. The slide is the more attention grabbing part. So that whole second measure, second string, first string, second, second again, then it's the first string. And then at the very end, he's hitting open on the third string. And this is weird. We're gonna hammer as if we were playing a, a bar chord here. So even though I'm only hammering on the third string, I'm actually gonna hammer the entire finger down like it was a bar chord. Because after we hammer, we're going to slide it into like a regular A chord. And then our thumb strums the fifth, fourth, and third string. So open, hammer, slide it up and strum at the same time. So 
So from the top, let's put those two together. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I strum too many there because I got to the second string. Measure three, so we've just strummed that A chord. Now this is hard because you really got to use only your fingertip, or I suppose you could do it if you're used to doing it with all three fingers. I suppose you could do it that way. Kind of hard to fit them all in to, to do that slide from the previous measure. But I suppose it's doable if it's really hard for you to play the A chord like that. And then after we hit that A, we do immediately the first string, then the sec, which is open, and then the B string is going to be the second fret, which is that chord tone in the A, and then back to open on the E. So it's open, second, open, E, B, E, and then there you hold for just one little beat, and then you do the second fret on the first string. So that measure is one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, six. There's no five beat, that's how I'm thinking of it. But then right into measure four, He's bending the third fret a little bit, just a half bend, get that blue blue note in there. And then the measure ends, fifth string the thumb, first string with the middle. And then I'm doing a quick hammer again, open to one on the third string. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and, or six E. Now, all these things sound really funny out of context, but just want you to loop it and get used to it. Whew, almost caught the fly. Donation pitch, guys. You know it by now. If you are getting value from this channel, support the value for value model. Uh, my value, my time, my talent. I'm giving it out there for you guys, putting a lot of hours into getting really accurate tabs, making you these videos, note for note, free download, my promise, nothing behind a paywall. It's all free for everybody out there. But for this value for value model to work, if I'm giving you value, then give some back. Even if you're hard on times, then just send me an encouraging email at mikesmusicmethod.com. Those go a long way. That's fine if it's just an encouraging email. And you smiling, you can take a picture of you smiling. Or even better, you like playing a song that you learned from the channel. But for those of you who can support, uh, what, what are these songs worth to you? Maybe every time you learn a song, it's, it's worth 50 bucks. Uh, maybe it's, it's 50 bucks a month, right? If you're getting private guitar lessons every week, that might be 160 bucks a month, 120 bucks a month. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's a dollar a day. I, I don't know what you can afford, but consider the value for value. If Mike's music method were to disappear from the internet, how would you feel? Would you go, oh man, I could have given like 15 bucks a month. Mike's at, at least worth my Netflix account, right? What's that? $9.99? I don't even know. Uh, you know, so consider it in those terms. And not only are you giving, helping me, give, giving me a living, but you're putting all of these great tabs out on the internet for free. There's so much content behind a paywall. And a lot of these towns, prime, John Hurt tabs are either non-existent or really terrible or behind a paywall if they even do exist. And here at Mike's Music Method, they're all free. So go download the tabs. For all you freeloaders, that's okay too, but please make, at least leave a nice comment below saying, you know, Mike, I'm freeloading, but I love you. You know, that's fine too. But I'm, I'm rambling, but you get the idea. If you guys pitch more in, it's giving me more time to make more videos, value for value. You get it. Let's keep going with the song. Thank you, Darren. First four measures. Let's run through them before moving on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Measure five, simple shuffle, but only for a second. So I'm sure we've all heard this blue shuffle before. Just hitting the lowest strings, open two, then open four, to five, back to four. So one more time, we got two, two, four, four, five, five, four. Then we hit the top string. And then we do that hammer on again, open. that measure it's not actually a quick hammer we have open and then right when we hammer on I'm hammering the whole chord down and I'm hitting the lowest two so the hammer is just sounding there but right when I hammer I'm hitting the bottom two strings of that E chord just a regular E major from there we have that hammer on into that 
seventh measure. All these cool little runs. You'll get them. We're going to do it. We're doing it together. We're going slow. All right, so after that hammer on E chord, then we hit the first string, so the E string. Then I'm hammering on the B string, open to two, and I'm using my pinky there. To the first string, then the second fret on that first string, and we're sliding to the third fret here. But before that, sorry, that's the next measure. So let's repeat that. Uh, and for measure eight, we slid from the two to three, back down to two, open, then the B string, pull off two to open. Then I'm going to do a quick hammer on. slide into the A chord and strum it at the same time. So let's go from the hammer on at the very end of measure six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. We slid into measure nine on that A chord. And then we do, it's like an A7. We got the third fret on the first string. And then we pinch four and, so we kind of get like a Travis picking moment here. We pinch four and two. So we got sliding into the chord. First string alone, then pinch four and one. Then one again. So you got three times in a row you're playing that third fret. Alone, pinched with the fourth string, and then alone again. Then you do the second fret on the B string. And then I'm pinching five and one with the third fret down again. So actually I'm keeping the third fret down the whole time. Just hold that A7 chord down. Three, two, two, two are the frets in that left hand there. So that whole measure. And it ends. Did I say that? Yeah, pinch. That's the next measure, but it's pinching five and one at the end. So one more time. fifth, thumb on the fourth, thumb on the fifth. So it's like a really slow Travis with all the cool blue stuff in between. To continue with measure 10, I'm kind of breaking my own rule here. I know I was playing the A like this, but now it's way easier to do it this way to get the next little runs in. I'm not exactly sure how Towns is doing it. Uh, so finger the A whichever way is more comfortable for you. But I'm playing it like this now, strumming it, and then immediately hitting the first string then hammering open to two on the second string. So chord, first string, hammer on the B string. And sorry, the rhythm is, these are both the uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. So the hammer on's really quick there. Measure 11, we got more sliding going on. So I'm strumming that chord, then immediately hitting the first string again. And then I'm hitting the second string, and the two is sliding to a five on that second string. And then back to open on the first string right after that. And then back to the second string, fifth fret. Then we do the third fret. Sorry, just the third fret on the first string. And we pull that off into the next measure. So one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we'll keep going to 12, back to the B string on the fifth fret, open on the E string. Then we pull off three to open, then open on the third string. And like before, we hammer on into the E chord. And you can just hit the low E. Doing both of those measures, 11 and 12. It's sounding bluesy. Measure 13, let's do it. We're gonna hammer into the E chord, which is what we did coming into the measure. A little pause on the second beat, just holding it. And then we do open on the first string. Then we're sliding with our ring finger, two to four on the G string, third string. So open on the E string, slide back to the E string, then open on the B. So that's the 
notes that whole measure. One, two, three. And the slide is, is really quick, right? But um, it's uh, whatever, uh, 16th notes. <laughs> one, two, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then measure 14, we're walking down that little, from that fourth fret, doing a cool chromatic walk. Four, three, two, open, then open on the first string. Then he does two on the fourth string. That one tripped me up for a while. I couldn't really hear it that well. At this point, you are most certainly lost. I am too. I'm learning the song with you. But what I'm doing here is just giving you every measure step by step so you have the timing down. You're not lost with the fingering and the chord shapes. But please use the timestamps below, right? So this is a way to learn it, but you're going to want to jump around, right? So maybe jump to the slow run throughs and get the first four measures really solid, feel good about it, then add four more. Um, because I know it's a lot of information to take in, and by the time you get to measure whatever we're on, 12 or whatever, you're just like, what, am I even gonna remember seven? So use the timestamps. This might be one of these songs where you're just mem memorizing four measures a week, or every three days you're tackling four measures. Wh whatever speed you're at, that's fine. You should be doing this, go slow. This is how you get better. Deliberate practice on things that are really difficult, but after a month or two's time, you're just like, wow, I never even thought I'd be able to play this song. And look, in three months, I already have the first uh, 12 bars down or whatever. In measure 15, we've got a quick, we're pinching here on the E chord, six and three, and it's a quick little hammer on, and then immediately to the first string. So I'm using thumb and pointer, and then either ring or middle to get that high E, and then hitting the third string again with my thumb, and then I'm bending using my pointer finger to hit the third fret on the B string to get it to bend. Everything's pretty quick except we're holding that bend. And 16 is a cool little walk. So let's do that. Real easy here. We just got open, three, open, one, two. So open, three, then to the fifth string. Open, one, two. Too. I'm using my middle finger and it's that bar chord, or sorry, the open B7 chord. If you don't know that, uh, two, open, two, one, two, from the ground up. So we're hitting that, this is measure 17, hitting that fifth string. And then I'm doing pointer, ring, pointer, but you can do thumb, middle, thumb, might be easier for you. And then in, so I think you got that one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Into the next measure, 18, he pinches four and one. And we're still holding that B, B7 chord down. So pinching that, a little held there for a moment. And then we're hitting the first string again. Then we do the fifth string, and then open on the first string. So we're lifting up the chord there, and then well, that same trick we've seen again and again. Open one, sliding into the A chord. Whichever way you're voicing it, it's gonna take some practice. Yeah, we're getting there. So we slid into 19, then it's open on the first string, second fret on the B string, and then the third fret on the high E. And the rhythm is. five and one. He's bending that third fret on the first string. So you got the bend, then it's open on the first string, then right away you're going to pinch four and one. So you get two opens in a row there. Five and one, one lone, and then pinching four and one. With Oh sorry, and when we're pinching, um, it's still kind of based on that A7 chord, so that fourth fret is a second fret. Same idea, open, hammering into the E chord. Going in to measure 21 here, just hammering into that E. So from there, we're hitting the fourth string, second fret, then I'm putting my pinky down, like an E7 chord, getting that D in there, pinky on the third fret, so. 
Then this part's kind of weird. So I got fourth string two, second string third fret. Then we're doing that slide again, but he's pretty liberal. He's like uh, kind of giving a little sprinkle of the third and fourth string. So before we were just sliding on that third, but here I'm definitely hearing the fourth. So I'm just barring those first frets, playing them, and then the thumbs hitting it bigger with the fifth string on it. And then to finish this, this measure, After that, sliding into the A, got that A7 again, the third fret's down, then I'm pinching four and one, then I'm lifting the chord to get open on the first string, and then again he's brushing two and three here, and hammering into the E chord, same time he hammers, he hits the thumb. So that slide, pinch, one more time. pretty easy here on 23 after we do that hammer on we just kind of apply this the E7 chord it's the fourth string open then and we're kind of lifting up the chord because it's a weird pattern fourth string is open then the first fret on the A string and the fifth string and then the second fret on that A string that's the rhythm starts where he's on that B7. We walked into the B7 from the previous measure. So just strumming the top two, one and two. Then hitting it again, then the fifth string, then open, and we can lift the chord here, open on the first string. Oh, and it's the hammer on, and then the strum, so it's delayed here. two measures. Yeah! And that is it! Whew. Darren Cook. Hats off to Darren. Comment below, everybody. Thank Darren. That is it for the lesson. We're not doing the entire song because that's absurd. That's already way too much information. Let's sit on that for a while. And it kind of riffs from there. You know, it's the same chords being implied, the blues, the E, A, the B7. Sure, there are new tricks and stuff, but you guys let me know because that's pretty darn tedious. If you want me to play through the whole song, I could tab it out, but it's Towns just kind of taking some of those ideas, noodling with them. Or maybe if there's another beautiful section where he breaks again, you guys let me know, but just know it's pretty time consuming. So unless you're actually gonna sit down and learn the whole thing note for note, I don't know that it's worth doing. Um, maybe you just wanna like free form the blues feel yourself and get better at it. But I'm down for whatever. Comment below, thank Darren. Hats off again, Darren. Thank you for bringing everybody this tutorial. Because of your donation, I was able to make it and now it is free to every human being out there with access to the internet. So thank you, Darren. You've done a great thing. We've done it together. Mike's Music Method. I can't talk today. My T's, my S's, I, like, I have no control over my tongue. But anyways, let's do some slow run-throughs. What you guys have been waiting for, real slow. If it's too too quick or, or too slow, use the YouTube time manipulation to get it just right at your practice level. Nice, intimate, slow runs. Real slow. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three.
not bad. It is, it's hard to do it that slow, but that is the main idea. And up to speed, you'll get it, I promise, but keep it that slow. And then when you do go quicker, maybe only do four measures at a time, so we can do a few of those as well. time. And then we'll do all the way through four. to do it that slow but you guys got it keep it slow if you're gonna bump the speed do just like four measures at a time a little quicker and learn them in, in small bites later <laughs>